Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. I hope you're doing well. Thanks so much for stopping by. I have two cards that I'm going to do a watercolor speed paint. If you like watching those things, hang in there as well as I'm going to talk about some sales with some of the items that you'll see at huckleberryherbs.com. Come on over and stop in my little store and so I'll talk about the sales and do a speed paint and show you some close-up of these but I'm going to be using in the meantime the Oakberry Cottage Sentiments which are beautiful and the Oakberry Lane Antics stamp sets. Here we go! So I used the Oakberry Lane Antics stamp set and this beautiful blossom which I stamped onto watercolor paper with stays on jet black ink and I'm just going to water the whole outside of the blossom just get it damp and uh, I use the stays on because the memento will um, get interfere with your paints if you get it wet so the stays on seems to stay pretty still for you I am probably going to try some of Gina Kay's uh, black ink that's specialized for wetting and water coloring and painting and hopefully not um, melting into your colors when you're working with your mediums but for right now I use the stays on and I am using Daniel Smith paints and this is Hansa Yellow and now I'm back with New Gamboge and truthfully I could have used just these two colors and made a yellow blossom but I had bigger plans <laughs> and you know how those go uh, I'm wetting the berries at this point while I let the outside of the blossom dry and I need to say at this point I am no watercolor specialist. I love to dabble in things and just like you uh, when I first use the watercolors I'm struggling with them but I've decided to take that challenge up and just keep fighting the good fight and uh, try to get in better at watercoloring. Here you can see I'm just taking off some of the paint because it was already becoming uh, too waterlogged for my comfort zone and this is quinacridone rose which is beautiful on the berries but as you can see kind of a big uh, dir here should I study my color theory more <laughs> of course it's not going to stay pink at all if I put it on top of yellow especially yellow that's slightly still damp which is fine because I, I was going for fall type colors and wanted to have a little bit of the pink tones in there and that's great except I definitely in the end ended up overworking this card which I hope for all of you who don't watercolor all the time uh, you can see me doing this and not doing it perfectly and still enjoying it and still coming up with a card because the perfection that we seek from ourselves oft often most of the time maybe always not reached um, should not deter you from digging in and trying things and I, I'm okay at watercoloring, but there's so many things to learn. I don't get to spend all day every day on the one topic. And uh, at this point in my life, I can't become a master at watercoloring. So I just do the best I can, enjoy the experience. I think if I was able to do it consistently, you know, a few times a week, that I would see great improvement. But uh, I'm trying to do too many things, obviously, and I don't ever get, what is that? jack of all master of none which is fine for me because I like to experience a lot of things and then if I come across something I'd like to dedicate more time to then I do and I hope to dedicate more time to watercoloring at some point I find it very relaxing the Daniel Smith paints are really they make a difference uh, I, these are my first professional paints I've always used student grade watercolors and I can definitely see how it makes a big difference uh, the reason that I got quinacridone rose is because I love to work in pinks and it's one of the more volatile colors as far as if you're going to make a painting that you want to hang on the wall and the sun's going to be on it 
it's not extremely light fast. Most pinks and most mediums are not going to hold up well. So this is supposedly one of the best ones. Not that you need that for a card. For a card, it's going to be out for a while. Somebody may put it in a keepsake place, but it's not usually hung on a wall for 10 or 15 years. The yellow that I'm using is, once again, Hansa yellow. And I'm mixing a little bit of the Hansa yellow with under under the sea green. Now, this is a great green for the grapevines that they originally introduced them with uh, some videos on painting grapes. And I bought it in a little kit that sort of, you could follow along and make the grapes and the grape leaves and things. Um, and it's an okay color green, but it's the only green that I have. And it wasn't quite the tone. You know, you have cool tones and warm tones. And it wasn't, the tones weren't matching up the way I wanted. But again, just keep going because I think every project has a point where it doesn't look that great and you got to get past that to end up with a final project and I I've learned to let the imperfections go so that I can enjoy myself and come up with a final project so it's okay the flower is overworked I'm gonna do better in the next one I'll show you uh, a second version with different color combinations I'm wetting this in between so that I can come back with phthalo blue and just let it dribble out. I love watching the watercolors and this is what I mean by I think it's a relaxing thing to do. Just let them run where they're gonna run. It frees you up from you know say you were working with ink, um, fine pens, trying to be really particular. Watercolor you have to walk into it with a little bit of let it go, let it be free. I definitely on this second card, which I embossed, that made it easier, <laughs> with some uh, fine gold embossing powder, and I'm using the quinacridone rose right away. I wanted to keep it very pastel, very light, and you can already see me starting to overwork this again. So I will fix that. Um, there you go. I've taken off some of the color, and I'm back to feel like I'm a little bit more in control of it. My goal was to have the center of the flower be darker but still have some highlights on the edges. So I think I achieved that much better with this second card than I did the first one. And there's a little spot over there on the right where there's no paint. That is so bothering me while I'm watching the video to do this voiceover. I hope you don't mind that I'm doing a lot of voiceovers lately. It's just as far as editing and time and fitting, making the videos into my day and the busy schedule I have between school and choir and trying to keep up with my little huckleberryherbs.com store. Um, this a lot of times I have to find a quiet time separate from when I was able to actually produce the item and it allows me to have a little bit more of an organized video for you. You should let me know what you think of the voiceovers. I try to, I, I, I would love to do some of the chats but um, uh, it, it, there's a lot of scheduling issues and stuff with that so then again please leave comments and tell me what you think of the work that I'm doing what you think of the Daniel Smith paints what you think of the card my process what, whether you like voiceovers do you enjoy watching um, things like this I, I go to sleep to them I, I watch them before I go to bed and it's so relaxing to see somebody else do what I wish I was doing myself <laughs> please excuse the fact that the light was changing in the window as I was doing this so we have a little real sunlight coming in. Now I'm back with Carbazol. I've never said that properly, I'm sure. Violet, again, from the Daniel Smith line. And I'm sorry I step out of sight here for a moment, but I'll be right back into it. So this time I'm making more of a purplish berry to go with my pink flower. And I think that's it. I'm not going to touch that flower anymore. I want to keep it very light and pastel and make sure that my center ends up dark as it should. Now this time with the green I decided okay I'm going to do a little blending of my own because I wasn't really wanting to put that darker toned green on this card. So I took some of the Hansa yellow and the phalo blue, no the French marine, and I just made my own green. <laughs> there you go, there's some color theory. You don't like what you have, if you have the basics, you know, yellow, red, right? 
um, blue you can make your own colors so this has a little bit more of a limey look to it and I think it went much better with the pink tones that I was using and uh, I'm much more pleased with this card or the beginning of a card than I was with the first one but again I saw it through and I made sure I mounted and put these cards together no matter what I thought of them because in the end we're our own worst critics and somebody receiving this card or purchasing this card wouldn't feel the same way we did so life is better with you in it I saw Jennifer McGuire recently do um, some a series on uh, sadly that we're having a, a higher rate of suicide and that people need each other and uh, she was making some cards and it made me think you know I, that's what I'm going to do is some feel better cards you count you matter cards this is from the Berry Fun, Fun Retreat paper I still love this paper I've been wanting to play with that pad so I put some foam tape on the back after I trimmed up my watercolor paper and I put the plaid. You wouldn't necessarily think plaid with flower. I don't know what you think about it, but I think it came out pretty good. And I'm going to be having the Berry Fun Retreat on sale, I think, because I still have some from last year and it has great fall scenes and colors. So I hope you go over and visit my little store and give me a little support. And you can find some decent prices on Heartfelt and then on top of it, if they're on sale, it's worth the trip. I love this paper. This is from the new Oakberry Lane, and I pointed this out in the close-up that I really enjoyed the distressed look of these panels of wood, and I just had to get my hands on that paper and use it for something, and I thought, oh good, it has pink <laughs> and some purple and some more uh, light and gentle colors in it, and it will be perfect for my pink flower which you might notice when I hold the two of them up together that I actually mounted them two different directions so you can use the flower either way this is just some inexpensive foam some you know play foam from Michaels and I'm putting that on the back so that I can raise the watercolor paper up a little bit but not use a lot of my tape the first one I did the tape this one was much easier to just put that piece of foam and mount this uh, on that pretty paper. I'm so excited that I was able to use that paper. And I'm glad to see that my gold sparkly embossing is sticking out and showing and that the colors uh, came out much more gently than the first one as I had hoped. I have the wishing you a speedy recovery that I just embossed on some pink paper and I'm mounting it onto a piece of some gold shiny gold paper to place the sentiment on the front of this card I think it came out pretty well not perfect but okay and once I get the sentiment onto that one I actually had embossed the life is better with you in it onto the watercolor paper itself for the other one so I didn't have to worry about a sentiment there and there it is two cards one stamp beautiful stamp I love it okay I hope you enjoyed that and as I said let me know what you think of doing voiceovers rather than so much the live ones and let me think let me know what you would think if I did do a chat I want to start getting into some live stream that's the new thing on YouTube is that everybody's jumping on board with that and I haven't done it before um, I'm a little concerned about the internet has to, well, whatever. There's issues, right? So let me know what you think about that and if you'd be interested in scheduling a date for such a thing. So here is the close-up of the pink one. And these flowers remind me of hibiscus, which is an end-of-the-summer flower. So that's just perfect. And I really do love this. I'm going to have to come back and do a another project with that paper. And here is a close-up of the one that I overworked. It came out all right, and it's totally different feel with the different colors and the fact that I put the background in and put the sentiment right on it. And as I said, this Berry Fun Retreat paper, which has lots of cool fall colors, will be on sale at huckleberryherbs.com. So make sure you take a stop over to the store, huckleberryherbs.com and look around and see what I have. Now I'm going to be back, I hope, my goal is to play with these. So this goes with the Oakberry Lane 
uh, Heartfelt Creations release for September as well. These flowers are beautiful and they're reminiscent of the flowers that I did my project with. But the 3D Blossom, oh my goodness, I so want to use those to shape. If you haven't seen the videos, I am going to at some point, sorry about the glare, come back with Gina K. I want to show you how to use the wreath builder with my Tim Holtz stamp platform and this is so so cool and they also have the wreath builder and this beautiful thanks stamp set and I'm gonna play with those I hope in a video and show you how to build the wreaths I also am hoping to do some poinsettia making so those are some things I have in the future hop on over and see the sale thank you so much for hanging out for subbing, for leaving a comment, and till next time, everybody, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless.